One question for, for David. First of all, super interesting exercise. Um, and, 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 and yeah, like, of course, you are considering like the household composition with the scale parameters to say that consumption could increase, of course, depending on the number of people, there are economies of scale, and so on. So, like, say, of course, like in, well, no, what I was thinking is the poverty line that we have defined, of course, is individual income. And maybe to apply that measure to the correction of household consumption actually is not properly by definition. So, yeah, like, I was wondering, like, in, in, in this scenario, like, with other complementary measure, can we take into account, like, I don't know, household poverty line, depending on household composition, exactly, like, to correct. Because, of course, like, this correction, like, increase the consumption of a household, given the same level of income, depending on wh who is inside. So, just a comment, and... I mean, I don't have an answer, I don't know if, if you do, but I just think that bringing into this analysis household consumption, essentially, uh, provides a new challenge that the old measures are not so appropriate. But, but yeah, super interesting also like to see, bringing this on, how all the conclusions and all the movement changes so much. Thank you. Thank you for the presentations. I have a, a question for David also. Um, in, uh, two questions. One is, I, I didn't get, uh, you mentioned in the introduction that you were aware that of, the, of the problem that we don't, do not really know who gets uh, the money, and that in the case of, uh, of the CCTs may be an important, you are allocating all the, all the money to the mother, I understand in the case of CCT, so if there is any way or if you have thought about any way of, of trying to, to solve that, and then uh, that it would be interesting to uh, decompose the, that gender gap in the, in the part that, uh, that is due to the taxes or benefits, because they, and to, to better understand what is happening there in, in that, in that uh, difference between disposable and market that you, that you are showing. Thank you. Any other questions? If not, I'll allow, allow myself to ask a question to Daria and to Rodrigo. Um, Daria, you did not discuss the budgetary effects. Of course, your, your policies are budget neutral, but how, by how much would uh, tax revenue need to increase in terms of, you know, compared to GDP, comparing the baseline with your reforms? Would this be a big increase? I'm just wondering in terms of how feasible this these policies, especially the tax, the tax side, would be. And Rodrigo, um, so I understand that it's hard to validate the exercise that that we do. But would it be possible to validate it with other days of other years of data? For instance, maybe for some uh, African countries, you have two sets of data with Salmod. What you could do is do this now casting with the data that you already have. Okay, so you take an old data from uh, an African country in South Mode, you adjust it based on an, a data that you also have from a, for another year in South Mode, and then you see how how well your your now casting is is doing. Okay, so I mean, of course this, this wouldn't be a validation in the COVID uh, scenario, but at least that would give you an idea of how the method is performing. So well, well thanks for the question. Uh, Regarding the scales, the idea is not to increase consumption, but you have, for instance, a hundred of income and a hundred thousand pesos, for instance. And the idea is, if if you increase the size of the household, for instance, if you have uh, children inside the household, is this a hundred is going to be reduced? So we are trying to account for that in in the exercise that uh, that we are doing. And the other question is uh, about consumption. I think that. That's not uh, possible here because we are trying to understand, I, I, I mean, uh, the idea to measure uh, welfare based on consumption, I guess is your question, is not possible here because the idea here is uh, analyze income. So if you mean, if you meant uh, 
uh, analyzing uh, consumable income that is like um, after tax and after uh, BIT, uh, that's possible, but if we are trying to measure welfare based on consumption, uh, we are not able to do it here, uh, mostly because in household service we have uh, consumption at the household level, so we are not able to uh, disentangle between women and men, so that's, the, um, that's a, a problem there. Regarding the assignment of conditional cash transfers to mothers, uh, we have checked the, the law in most countries. For instance, in Colombia, Mateo here uh, checked uh, familias in action is allocated to the mother. In some cases, the, the transfer is, is allocated to the person that has an, a bank account, for instance. And we are, in, in that case, we assign the, the, the transfer to uh, the head of the household. Uh, that's the best guess we, 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 we have. Uh, in all the transfers, it's not the case that in all the transfers the, the money goes to the mother. It's in some of them, and if that is the case, we inside the model, we allocate them to the mother. Um, and uh, the idea of the compost, yes, I think is very interesting. We are uh, checking the other literature, especially this paper from these two colleagues from Ireland that decompose the effect of the gap, the, the gap between taxes, uh, earnings, and uh, also the, the effect of the hours of work. Because, uh, in, for instance, in, in Europe is the case that uh, women work less hours than, than men. So we, we, it, it's interesting to decompose here, but uh, I think it's next steps in our agenda with Javier. Uh, thank you very much for uh, this question. I would read a suggestion because I have the data, of course, on the budget um, um, that is uh, required for this uh, sort of uh, exercise. Uh, so the motivation, uh, I, I'm, I, I can't tell you the percent of, uh, in terms of percent of GDP right now, I need to look this up. Um, the, uh, the choice for this uh, increase, um, so I, I consulted with uh, the national teams uh, in these countries, uh, and uh, so basically I um, chose this increase in VAT as, as the starting point, and uh, the, the other idea was to, to see whether we could match and we could achieve the same uh, uh, level of uh, increase in revenues through personal uh, changes in personal income tax. Um, yeah, so these are just um, uh, two possible options. There are um, other options are possible, um, but I haven't uh, yet considered them. So, thanks for this question. No, thank you, Javier. I, I just agree with you. So it was more like a comment, right? Not a question. Uh, and now, for example, we are updating the models uh, for some countries with new data waves. Uh, we are updating the Mozambique model with. Uh, a data wave from 1920, and they are collecting new survey now. So next year, probably we have a new wave of the the IOF, that is Mozambique micro data. So we can just compare the exercise we did with the real uh, information. Yeah, thank you. Okay, are there yes more questions? Yes. So yeah, say I've worked. I've the work that I do actually is about household decisions, time use, labor supply. So I'm really related to this. So say for example, I know that, or, or it depends on, on the measure, of course. But you can say exactly example just that you said one million for one individual. Typically, you can think that is less than two individuals because the rent is less, and depending on the measure and how you take into account. If there are two adults with one million, you say the scale parameter gives more consumption, or th this is, of course, a child will reduce it. But in this regard, maybe you are using like another another measure, and now that I recall, you said that is 0 0.5 if there are two adults and zero. So please, like, but then I didn't follow why when you are taking into account like the household, the poverty is being reduced because uh, when I saw the that graph, I said, okay. This is taking into account like some scale economics, then it's creating more income or consumption, and this is why it's, it, it, like the the poverty reduced when you take into a house household. So just a clarification, then like yeah, like about the measure and why is this dropping down so dramatically? 
I just have a clarification question for Rodrigo. Um, honestly, I don't know very much a bit about these methods, um, but I just would like to know when you were showing these differences between informality and formal and informal workers, I was wondering who exactly you are showing there, like the change in the income, because that status also changed with COVID, right? I mean, there was a huge amount of people who jumped from I don't know informality to just being at home or from being uh, employed to unemployed, etc. So I just want a clarification about what what exactly is showing there. Thank you. Oh, sorry. And Daria, just one little cl clarification. You, you had uh, market values, disposable income, and consumption, something like the measure that you had. I am just not related. So can you tell us what is this measure about? Like the one that you saw, consumption. Uh, income. Consumable income? Uh, consu consumable income versus disposable income, that's right. Um, so these are uh, static uh, tax and benefit micro simulation models, right? So in this case, uh, what we do is we have the pre crisis data set. So it's the same data. Um, that I explained it from Mozambique, for example. So this data is, um, let's say that's for 2019. So this informal people is basically assuming that uh, in the same survey data, in the same micro data, a share of um, the population are in the informal sector. Okay, and this will be constant. Uh, when we simulate the shock. So we cannot, uh, at least in this analysis here, we cannot uh, simulate transitions uh, at the same time that we simulate the shock. Uh, at least this is uh, what we can do as far as my knowledge goes. So, uh, yeah. Okay, I think I have uh, answered this. So the uh, the measure that I'm using is consumable income or post fiscal income. So that's uh, one step above disposable income, that which is typically used in in uh, fiscal incidence analysis. So uh, the difference is that you also uh, um, subtract the indirect taxes. So you account for this, uh, and then you arrive at the actual income that people can consume. Okay, so the the last graph, uh, the, the main thing is that it was not the, the ratio, it was poverty incidence. So we are analyzing poverty incidence, uh, assuming that uh, we, we compare the line with the individual income. We have three columns, we have three columns, uh, individual, couple, and household. So the main thing is it's not the same ratio, it's poverty incidence. So if you take only your income and apply poverty line, so the the incidence is higher. If you pull resources uh, between couples, the poverty decreases. And if in the last uh, option, uh, we are using an equivalence scale that is different than we do here because in Colombia we have a per capita income. We pull all incomes, we don't have a, a equivalence scales. But in, in the last uh, bit, uh, we pull incomes from all sources, so the incidence is, is lower. Uh, that's the, the main thing. I, I think the main confusion is because the last graph was poverty incidence and not the ratio. Uh, perhaps to complement on David's answer, uh, the, the reason for these differences is also household composition. So when you go from the individual, okay, you see big disparities because you have individualized it, no, there's no pooling at any unit. When you pull across couples, uh, there's income pooling between two people, uh, there's equivalent scales due to uh, children, but this mitigates um, especially gender differences. I don't know if you noticed, but it drops to the levels of male poverty rates at the individual level, mostly, in all countries. When you go to household, the thing is that you are pooling now among more people so earnings of, of more people, income of more people. And especially in the context of Latin American countries, you have multi-generation families. And imagine many people, uh, young female workers living with their parents where their parents have pensions. Okay, so then now you're pulling at the household level and that decreases further the, the, the poverty rates, yeah. 
Um, I don't know if there's any more questions. Yeah. Uh, no, it's, it's just very, very small. Uh, when you're when you're pulling the couples, uh, there is still a difference, right? And did, does this come from individuals who are single? Or, okay, yeah, I see. Okay, so I guess we are ahead of time, but it's okay because we are hungry. So <laughs> thank you everyone for the questions. Thanks a lot for the presenter for the great presentations.